بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وآل بيته أجمعين All perfect praise is due to Allah I testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final prophet and messenger. May Allah exalt his mention as well as that of his families and all his companions. Last time we concluded verse 17 of the set of four verses addressing the issue of the hour. Verse 18, Allah Azza wa Jal says, يَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ فَتَأْتُونَ أَفْوَاجًا The day the horn is blown and you will come forth in multitudes. Imam al-Bukhari, may Allah have mercy upon him, as reported or narrated by Abu Hurairah, he said, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, between the two blows, the blow of death, where Allah azza wa jal causes all creation to die, to perish, and the blow of resurrection are 40. So people asked Abu Huraira, 40 days? He said, I can't confirm. 40 what? They said, 40 months? He said, I can't confirm. They said, 40 years? He said, I cannot confirm. Although, Al-Qurtubi, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, another narration confirmed that this 40 is 40 years. Allah Azza wa Jal, with the first blow, He will cause people to die. And this refers to the second blow. The blow when Allah Azza wa Jal will resurrect people, will resurrect all creation, not just mankind, will resurrect all creation. So they can face accountability. So they can be held to account. People will come in multitudes, in groups. They will be gathered and resurrected to face their fate and destiny. To face the consequence of their deeds, their actions, their words, their intentions. A precise measure, a precise, accurate scale will weigh all of that. There will be no escape on that day. Then Allah goes on in verse 19 saying, وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابًا and the heaven is opened and will become gateways. We mentioned in previous sessions the size of the heavens, the magnitude of the creation of Allah. Allah called them seven strong heavens. These heavens will crack on that day. They will crack open 
on that day. Ibn Abi Hatim reported that Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Allah Azza wa Jal, after the horn is blown and people are resurrected and gathered, He will gather mankind, jinn, beasts, birds, and everything that was created. And then the first heaven will crack open. And the dwellers of that heaven will descend. The angels of that heaven will descend and surround these who were gathered, resurrected and gathered. And then the second heaven will crack open and the angels will descend and surround those who were resurrected and the angels of the first heaven. And so on and so forth. Until the seventh heaven cracks open and angels descend. And then, and then Allah, the Almighty, will descend. With Jibreel, Israfil, Mikael, and the angels designated to carry his throne, Allah the Almighty will descend in a way befitting his majesty and glory. He will descend to hold people to account. Are we ready? Are we ready for that moment? Brothers and sisters, are we ready for that moment? Are we ready for that meeting? Are we ready for that stance before Allah? The angels of every heaven will be larger in number than the angels of the one before it, in addition to those resurrected. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as reported by Al-Hakim and Al-Tabarani and Al-Albani, Rahmatullah Ali, may Allah have mercy upon him and upon them, ruled this to be an authentic narration. Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I was permitted to inform you about one of the angels who carry the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. The distance between his earlobe and his shoulder for us it is this long. It is this much. For that great creation of Allah, for one of these angels, the distance between the earlobe and the shoulder is a journey of 700 years. Can you imagine? the kind of horror people will be in on that day, seeing these angels in this endless number, surrounding them from all sides, and then the descent of Allah, the Almighty, the Magnificent. Can you imagine the fear that will be in the hearts again I repeat are we ready isn't it time now to pledge repentance to Allah 
from all our shortcomings, from all our sins. And each of us knows his own shortcoming and his own sins. He knows his weak parts. Isn't it time to pledge not to go back? Isn't it time to intend now and pledge Allah Azza wa Jal now to reform ourselves? To go back to the way that pleases Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed it is. Before it is too late, brothers and sisters. Before that moment comes and there is no return. Before the moment comes and one would say, Rabbi Rji'oon, my Lord, bring me back. لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِيمَا تَرَدْ Perhaps I can do good in that what I left, that I left behind. One of the righteous salaf, may Allah have mercy upon him, had a grave dug in his backyard. And every night he would go down and would repeat this verse. رَبِّ رُجِعُونَ رَبِّ رُجِعُونِ لَا عَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَدْ He would repeat, رَبِّ رُجِعُونَ The verse says, قَالَ رَبِّ رُجِعُونَ He would say, my Lord, bring me back so I can do good. And he would just repeat this verse. And then would stand up and climb out and talk to himself, saying, so you're back. You're back from the grave. As if he was, he was dead and he was given a chance. You were back again. So fulfill what you claimed. You claimed if you're brought back, you will do good, you will act righteous, so fulfill, you still have a chance. So let us do. Let us repent. Let us pledge. Let us do righteous before there is no chance to go back. The last verse of the set of verses, verse 20, Allah says, وَسُجِّرَتِ الْجِبَالُ فَكَانَتْ سَرَادًا and the mountains are removed and will be but a mirage. Allah Azza wa Jal will demolish these strong, tall mountains which we described when we spoke about the favors Allah Azza wa Jal bestowed upon mankind. And the mention of mountains was made. We described how strong and tall these mountains are. And the favor of Allah Azza wa Jal upon mankind in instilling these mountains on earth. For stability and safety. These mountains will be like dust particles blown in the air. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, as mentioned in the tafsir of As-Sam'ani, he said, a man from the tribe of Thaqif, and another narration says, a group from the tribe of Thaqif, asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa about the mountains and what would happen to them on the day of judgment and so Allah Azza wa Jal revealed this verse. Al-Izz ibn Abdul Salam said, Allah Azza wa Jal on the day of judgment will erect, uproot these mountains from their places. Shaykh al-Uthaymeen said, 
they will be uprooted and then a wind will come and it will demolish it, will make it like dust and then it will be blown in the air. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. What might, what greatness Allah Azza wa possesses. What power Allah Azza wa possesses. These attributes are enough to make us glorify Allah Azza wa Jal. And give Him His due glory and praise. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us among those who listen and act upon the best of what they hear, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to repent, to enable us to maintain ourselves upon the right path, and to cause us to die upon the state of Islam and make our graves places or gardens of paradise, and to widen them and illuminate them for us and to join us all with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in paradise and we will resume with verse 21 of Surah An-Naba in the following session insha'Allah subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk